Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Look, I can tell you're really excited to get into renal pathology. It's like one of the kids' meals at Mega King Burgers. You just want to jump straight to that toy. I don't blame you. They've got the entire new line of Jurassic Park toys, just in time for the movie release. Yeah, but, 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 but hang on a second. Before getting into renal pathology, you've got to master some good old-fashioned renal function testing and lab values. It's okay. We'll make it easy. First, we'll cover routine measures of renal function, like BUN and creatinine, and then look at how things change in the setting of acute kidney injury. One of the main players here is creatinine. And it's sketchy, it's always represented by a creatinine credit card. Creatinine is the breakdown product of creatine. See how you can create your own creatine value meal? Well, let's see what options we have to the right there. Got some meat, another meaty thing, a gross looking meat kebab or something. Yep, creatine is in your meat, which when phrased uh, less awkwardly, means that creatine is a molecule that lives inside muscle cells, holding onto high-energy phosphates to help generate ATP during muscle contraction. When it's broken down, it ends up in your blood as creatinine, which we can measure. Creatinine has a normal serum concentration of 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. You can usually expect to see a value around 1.0, hence the dollar menu sign up above. Why is creatinine so important in renal physiology, though? Well, it actually has nothing to do with creatinine itself. Instead, what's important here is the way it's filtered by the kidney. Creatinine floats around in your blood, ends up at the glomerulus, and from there, it's freely filtered into Bowman's capsule and right on into that renal tubule. In other words, the concentration that reaches the glomerulus is the same that enters the nephron for excretion. Just think of this display of free filtered water. That means freely filtered. Also, once creatinine is in the tubule, the nephron doesn't do much to it. The concentration that enters your nephron is pretty much the same as the concentration that leaves the nephron and enters the urine. So don't worry. It's neither secreted nor absorbed by the nephron. It just passes on through. Psst. Hey, hey. It's actually secreted a little tiny bit into the nephron so the urine may be slightly more concentrated than the blood. Shh. All right, let's back up a bit. So, for creatinine to go from blood to urine, it needs to be filtered from the glomerulus to Bowman's space in the nephron. The rate at which this occurs is called glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. It's essentially the amount of fluid that filters into Bowman's space per unit time which directly affects the rate of clearance of substrate from the serum into the filtrate. At Sketchy, GFR is represented by the rate of a coffee filter, the grounds filtration rate, if you will. Now when I say GFR, you might just think of a single nephron. In reality though, the total value of GFR is equal to the sum of the filtration rates in all of the functioning nephrons. When added together, Glomeruli filter about 180 liters of fluid per day. That's about 125 milliliters per minute. When the kidney isn't functioning, it's not filtering, and GFR goes down. So that sounds like something important I want to measure, right? Well, too bad. Measurement of GFR is complex, time-consuming, and cumbersome to do in clinical practice. Instead of assessing GFR directly, then, Let's estimate it with serum markers. You'll hear people call this estimated GFR, or eGFR. One way to do this is to choose a molecule and measure how fast it's being cleared from the serum. An ideal filtration marker would be a solute that is freely filtered at the glomerulus, and once it's in that nephron, neither secreted nor reabsorbed. Wait, that sounds like creatinine. Let's just use that. So, we assess creatinine clearance to estimate GFR. Take a look. Next to our GFR coffee, we've placed a credit card getting cleared to remind you that creatinine clearance kind of approximates GFR. Hey, it's actually secreted into the renal tubule just a little bit, remember? So it will actually overestimate GFR.